Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT This Morning, devastation remains in Johnson County this morning. Two people are confirmed dead, others are missing after flooding tore right through that county. And Lexington police are working a death investigation right now after they say a body was found inside a home. And I didn't know it was going to be such a busy. And one man says the severity of recent storms in McGoffin County took him by surprise. You'll hear more about what that means for his business coming up this morning. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you and welcome into WKYT. It is your Wednesday morning, July 15th. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. It is, maybe you want to call it the calm after the storm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good term because it is a chance now for those folks who have been very hard hit uh, to get out and assess the damage. Uh, hopefully these uh, rescue uh, situations this yeah. morning uh, will prove fruitful. Well, to try and start picking up the pieces and let's get a look at what the weather has in store for us this morning with Micah. Yeah, cleanup is going to be underway not only today but the next couple of days through your weekend. Uh, as things really calm down, today and tomorrow will be your calmest days in the forecast, no doubt about it. We really just don't have a chance of rain. Friday off towards your weekend, smaller chances kind of develop toward the afternoon. But still, I mean, at least we're only getting smaller chances, not these big thunderstorms rolling on through. So things are pretty quiet this morning. It looks like across the region, current temperatures, 60s, 70s, kind of depends on where you are. All in all, it's not a bad feel. Today's forecast, 80 degrees. That's a very nice day. A mixture of sun and clouds as we slide off into your afternoon. How long does this stay? And not only that, but where do these temperatures go? They won't stay near 80. It's nowhere near average for this time of year, not the summer at least. And I'll have all that coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, a good change in our weather. And we're seeing devastating destruction in eastern Kentucky after rounds of storms left behind floodwaters and a lot of damage. Johnson County, especially, of course, hit hard. Flooding is to blame for the deaths of two people. Many more are still missing this morning. Debbie Cambridge's Mark Barber is joining us at our live desk with the latest out of Johnson County. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Rebecca. Six people are still missing this morning. So far, two bodies have been found. The Johnson County coroner is identifying those two people as 74-year-old Willa May Pennington and Herman May. Now, crews are telling us that they had to do 50 rescues in the area in just 24 hours after those floodwaters. Take a look at them right there. Crushed homes like that one and left a path of widespread destruction. The worst flooding happened in the Flat Gap community on Ramey Branch. Rescue crews are continuing to search an eight and a half mile area there for survivors. And all 500 homes saw storm damage, and of those, more than 150 were destroyed. Governor Steve Bashir has declared a state of emergency to provide assistance to the area, and the National Guard has stepped in. Right now, authorities are checking IDs of anyone trying to get into the area, and anyone who is not supposed to be there is being turned around. Just so many people affected by that storm, and so much help is still needed. The county judge executive says they still need donations and they are looking and anybody who is looking to help can send those donations to his office. However, he says it will take a couple of days to figure out what all is needed there. Now, a shelter has been set up there for people who are in need. Our Amber Philpott and Sean Moody are both in Johnson County and they will have much more on that relief starting at 530. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you very much. Floodwaters led emergency crews to conduct many water rescues in McGoffin County. Salyersville was where most of those rescues took place on Highway 460 near the McGoffin and Morgan County line. High waters also shut down the roadway yesterday. Some folks lost their livelihoods when floodwaters buried their crops. You know, we're not dealing with loss of life or uh, property loss. We lost some pumpkins and corn, and it's, it hurts. But at the end of the day, you know, you got to be realistic about it, you know. And I told my wife, Ashley, that if we could make it through this little storm, we could, uh, might be all right. But I didn't know it was going to be such a doozy. Oldfield tells us the flooding is the worst he has ever seen. And now he's hoping for some help from his insurance company. A flash flood emergency was also declared in the Dwarf community of Perry County last night. Emergency crews say some people had to be rescued from their homes because of high water there. Highway 476 was also shut down in that area because it was covered up in water. 
Many in Bell County trying to deal with the aftermath of several rounds of recent storms. Especially hard hit was the Brownies Creek community. That's along Highway 987. This is not the first time folks in that area have seen flooding, but they say this flood was the worst they have ever seen. It was a lot of rain all at once, and coming down from the mountains, it just filled up the streams more than they could handle. That was flooded. All of this was flooded. We were in the road for at least five minutes trying to get pulled in here and ready. And then this was at least uh, up here on me. It would be up to like right here. A young witness there who will long remember this. Families are still working on cleaning up that damage and debris this morning. It was wind that caused some damage in parts of Lexington. Part of a tree fell onto a home along Dover Road off North Broadway. The man who lives there says he noticed the winds picking up, so he went outside to move his truck, which was near the tree. No sooner I got in my truck and shut my door and started it, it come down. I mean, it, it, it literally scared me to death. A few other trees fell around the city. At one point, about 4,800 KU customers in Lexington were without power mainly in the Andover and Gainesway neighborhoods. Governor Steve Beshear has declared a state of emergency due to the flooding. The declaration makes state resources available to local officials. Some of those resources include the Kentucky Emergency Operations Center, the National Guard, and financial assistance. Now, many of you have been sending us your pictures and video of the storms and the damage that it has left behind and as they were moving through your area. Leanne Lucas shared this picture of flood water with us. This is Mash Fork in McGoffin County. You can see the problems there. And if you can safely take pictures, we hope you'll share them with us on our website, WKYT.com. Just look for the Eyewitness tab. And you can also catch up with all the latest forecasts and news on our website as well. We have some new information this morning on a story we first brought you at last night at 11. Police are working a death investigation at a home on River Park Circle in Lexington. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is live from that scene. Michelle, have we gotten any updates overnight on this? We do have new information, Bill. As you can see behind me, police are still on the scene for safety reasons as they found an elderly woman dead in her home here on River Park Circle near Trent Boulevard. Now, they are investigating the scene as they do find things suspicious. The robbery homicide unit is investigating, and police are not saying exactly what happened, but that her death is suspicious. The woman's family had not heard from her in more than a day and became worried. They entered the home to find the woman dead. Police are not saying why they believe her death is suspicious, nor will they release her name at this time. Now, the woman's body has been sent to Frankfurt to have an autopsy later today. Live in Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. All right, thanks so much, Michelle. It's been more than a week now since flames destroyed several historic buildings on Whiskey Row in Louisville. Investigators say that fire was sparked accidentally by a blowtorch that was used by construction crews. Many businesses had to close while fire crews put out hot spots there. As a result, lost hundreds of dollars, some of those businesses, but many still hope for future success. Whiskey Row is doing well, but our, our best years are yet to come. Once this whole block's developed, uh, I think we'll finally become the ultimate destination place that, that we want to be. Crews have still not gotten in, uh, not gone inside the burned out buildings because the walls could collapse. So dangerous situation for them there potentially. And roads nearby are still closed to traffic. But it sounds like they're very encouraged. You know, uh, bourbon yeah. is uh, certainly booming. As really a trying to build up that area. I've been down there before, so hopefully they can get back up and running. Right, eight minutes after five on WKYT this morning. Hey, we're just getting started here on your Wednesday, and it's so nice to have you along. If you feel like something has been missing from your fried rice at a popular Chinese fast food chain, you're not alone. We'll tell you why Panda Express is doing away with one very important, some would say, product coming up in five minutes. Also ahead on WKYT, the new super fast internet that is slowly growing in popularity around the country. It will cost a lot to install, though. We'll tell you how much coming up in your consumer news. And we're looking outside. No thunderstorms in the forecast for today. As we slide throughout the next couple of days, it looks pretty dry. And I'll have that latest forecast coming to you next.